today is Edwin's Monday Evening Property Rant. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Welcome to this post covering finance and property news with a distinctively Australian flavour. And just before we start, a quick reminder that tomorrow night, Tuesday at 8pm Sydney time, I'll be joined by Chris Bates, a mortgage broker from Sydney, and we'll be discussing the current state of the Sydney property market. And you can ask him a question live via a YouTube chat. So see you tomorrow night at 8pm Sydney time. Uh, today I have Edwin with me once. Well, I thought it was Edwin, but uh, it could be anything under there. Hi, Edwin. Uh, G'day, Martin. I just uh, attended some uh, a building, you know, some property inspections, and they gave me ten minutes, and uh, and they told me to wear a mask. And I said I don't have one, so they gave me this, so I could do the inspection. <laughs> Very good. And then the idea is to wear it as a blindfold, so you can't see any defects. Yeah, well, they said, look, you got ten minutes, and uh, you got you got to run around the house and see how many how many defects you can't you, you can't identify, and uh, you know, and, and and see how many walls you bump into. Well, I suppose that's one way of testing construction quality, isn't it? If you bump into the wall and you get a bruised nose, you know that it was well built. <laughs> yeah, look, I think uh, I think I'm going to start sending uh, Dusty and Evan. Uh, to do the inspections based on the uh, on the criteria at the moment, they only give you ten minutes to inspect the homes, and uh, and and they expect you to rely on the building and pest reports that uh, that they're farming out, and uh, they're charging. Look, they're not charging a lot for them, obviously, but then again, uh, yeah, as they say, paid peanuts, you get monkeys, and when you uh, when a, a real building and pest inspector will charge you around six hundred, and they charge fifty per pop uh, for interested parties to download. Uh, the the building and pest report provided by the owners. I mean, what do you expect? I say. Uh, the other thing is, of course, is they omit a lot of um, essential uh, faults in the in the property that can end up costing tens, if not hundreds, of thousands of dollars to uh, to purchase. So it's uh, ludicrous. Yeah, there's a little thing called caveat emptor, right? That the buyer beware. But that also means that buyers should be able to do their own due diligence. They must do their own due diligence. They certainly shouldn't be relying on, you know, a very superficial and quite cheap um, report, which is sort of offered by the agents on behalf of the vendor, right? Um, it doesn't tell you anything. No, and, and this is what we found out, Martin, and as, uh, as per the, uh, the, the screenshots and the video that, I, that I've sent you, and, and uh, only today we've just uh, got a report or a response from uh, one of the building uh, inspectors that we challenged on their report uh, with regard to to the moisture levels in the in the bathroom walls. In the, it, they were adjoining uh, bathroom and ensuite walls, uh, and that that's that that was on to do with the bathrooms, let alone all the all the issues that aren't noted in the report uh, with regard to the weep holes being covered up and cemented over, or the you know, concrete pathways alongside the, the the home were raised higher than the weep holes. Uh, and and I spoke to the uh, to the inspector and said, oh look, mate, you know we we're only there for a certain amount of time, and and our inspections are visual, and and we use the latest technology. Well, yeah, look, you can use the latest technology, but it would be best if you got out of your car and you walked around the house and and, and you put the, uh, the the thermal imaging unit that you have that you say costs you two thousand know, dollars, up against the wall as opposed to be you know, sitting in your car and uh, from across the road and trying to get a reading from there. <laughs> I love it. The idea of driving up and just sort of you know, pointing it in the general direction saying, well, looks good to me. Can't get any <laughs> any damp readings from that. So it looks pretty good. Well, look, that, that's and that's as far as you've got to trust these building uh, re reports provide, Martin. Look, I, I'm, you know, uh, after we do our own inspections on behalf of our clients and, you know, it's it's for two things. One's to pick up on to pick up on issues that the, their building reports don't pick up on. And to see if the the property obviously suits our clients' uh, appetite and the, the the wish list what what, you know, what it is. Also to avoid them spending a lot of money and a lot of time uh, in in frivolous, albeit they you know, these reports cost sixty dollars or seventy dollars in some cases, but then again they don't show a lot anyway. Uh, so you know, it's to to avoid all these hassles. But you know, for for a lot of these the, these um, uh, issues that we pick up, I mean the. You know, yeah, okay, we didn't have to move a lot of things around in order to see what's wrong with the property. So yes, it is a visual, and they rely heavily on their on their um, 
you know, on on the report side to say that they don't warrant this, they don't warrant that. Uh, they've got uh, you know our causes. They've got you know all, all these uh, all, all these um, uh, things written in the report, which gives them an out. But seriously, I think the I think the regulators need to take need to take a lot of these things to task. But first and foremost, don't rely on them and get your own. Is my call. No, this is a great call. And of course, the other point is that the uh, report would have been prepared for the vendor in any case, right? So there is no legal connection, as far as I can see, between that report and a prospective borrower, a borrower, buyer, um, because it wasn't ever done for them in the first place. Well, that, uh, exactly right. And so, and this is where there's, there's all these out clauses, as I say, as I call them, and and you just got to be be careful. But look, on yeah, on all things, uh, on all things, uh, yeah, being careful and watching, yeah, you know, watching out for all this dodgy stuff that goes that goes around. I mean, look, there are famous politicians that will also, or yeah, family of politicians that would like to sell you, uh, uh, sell you works of art. Uh, you know, and, and on that note, uh, you know, I, I'd like to sell our viewers uh, Dusty's and Evan's work of art, uh, if, if they're up for it. <laughs> well, it looks quite amazing. Yeah, yeah. I, lo I love the colours and movement. Um, what is that, you know, mousing at the weekend or something, is it? Yeah, and uh, with a bit of cheese. <laughs> oh, yeah, very good. I love it. <laughs> well, let's talk about an, a, another uh, unfortunate picture, and that is to do with listings, right? Listing numbers very low but it's very interesting when you start decomposing what types of listings are low compared with those that aren't yeah it is uh the uh, I've, I've sent you the screenshot of the of yeah uh, around about the same time this year when we were in full lockdown uh the um the numbers for for housing were yeah in the early five thousands in terms of uh for sale listings in sydney uh, but apartments were around about twenty one thousand. uh and in in the numbers for 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 last week, yeah, you know, we're about the same, or you know, a hundred or so lower in in terms of uh, freestanding homes. But you know, only one third of the apartments for sale. So there's not a lot of choice, Martin. But it look, it is seasonal. Uh, apart from the fact that we've gone into lockdown, there's a lot of uh, uh, uncertainty. But like you and I have also been saying for many uh, for many weeks now, is that there, there is. There is a throttle, or the, the the developers and the marketing companies have throttled the the apartment listings uh, and are drip feeding the market uh, because you know we know what's what, what's happening in the background. It's not rosy, and in, in it's only a matter of time. But then again, yeah, you know, with uh, with the banks uh, now, um, you know, about to throw out more, uh, you know, pull more levers on in terms of uh, uh, you know, loan deferrals uh, because of the Delta trend. I mean, who's to say what's going to happen uh, moving forward, Martin? Well, yeah, that's right. So the banks have um, extended uh, further deferral uh, support. Of course, it's in their own vested interest, right? Because the, the last thing they want to do is to have rising loan arrears. So by effectively pushing it down the track, they can say, oh, no, no, our portfolios are fine. And it will help some people in the short term. Um, although, of course, in some cases, it's a deferral rather than anything else, right? So it just pushes those loan repayments further away means you've still got to pay them and you have to end up paying back more in terms of interest. Um, but, you know, I wonder how many other strains of um, a virus are coming through and how many other flavours of um, <laughs> flavours are going to come and follow it. Well, you know, we've got the Delta now, you know, then from, uh, uh, now I've been told that that's the Delta's from, uh, from, uh, from Peru of all places. And, you know, Lamna is from uh, Brazil. Lombarda is going to be from Colombia. Uh, Meringue is going to be from Ecuador, I guess. And uh, and that's just Latin America. So, I mean, the banks have better start continuing to print a lot more money. And, so, and, and, you know, the, you know, and, the, uh, and the government better start uh, pulling the other levers in order to support this apartment uh, market that's about, to, uh, that's about to collapse. Because all I'm hearing from uh, from a lot of investors that own apartments, a lot of people that are trying to sell apartments, is they're, they're having a hard time, particularly in the areas where where there's there are yeah, there, there are clusters or people don't want to live in, um, yeah, because not only issues with regard to the uh, to the pandemic, but also I inherent issues with regards to construction, and also the you know, mold issues. And and th this winter seems to be very uh, cold and wet winter, and it's yeah, the mold is going to certainly uh, be more um, 
more prevalent uh, in these you know, in these uh, dog boxes that are that are laying around in the in a lot of parts of Sydney. Absolutely, and uh, you know there have been more reports of defective buildings, more people being kicked out of buildings, and all sorts of things. Right, um, that's continuing, and it's interesting that the building commission has started up the ante and uh, is getting very much more vocal with regard to what needs to be done, which is, I guess, good. But uh, still, with limited powers, and um, you know, to what effect? Well, th that that is uh, th there's been a lot of noise, uh, but th however, this noise hasn't affected the fact. The, that uh, we've got overseas investors and you know, l looking at the, some form of uh, joint ventures, or the only thing I can put it with the, the state governments to, to, to come up with these, um, you know, to come up with these new developments that they're trying to, that they're trying to also bring in. And, and of all things, you know, uh, student accommodation, uh, that's the latest uh, thing on the, uh, on, the, you know, on the headlines with the AFR. You know, the, um, the, you know, the, it's, it, it, it seems like yeah, you know, some some people just haven't read the the last memo uh, of the fact that the, a lot of students don't particularly want to come to Australia, or if they do want to come to Australia, it's going to be very difficult to come to Australia, and that's predominantly from China. So yeah, but yet uh, we her uh, is uh, doubling down on uh, student housing, and they're building you know uh, dwellings to house something like six six thousand beds. Mm. Well, it's very interesting. Um, I've had a few one-on-one -on -one conversations with people who bought big into the student um, housing sector over the last couple of years, right? And they're telling me horrendous stories about vacancy rates, you know, not just 5%, but 50, 60, 70% vacant. And where they can let them, they're getting much lower rents than, than before. And with the borders now shut for, well, who knows how long, especially uh, with uh, what's happening in Sydney, um, you know, students are just not going to come. Not going to come. It seems to me that um, uh, people have got um, the idea that they'll build, and if they build, then they will come. But um, perhaps they will build, but people won't come, which means you've got more vacancies. Now, well, that's right, Martin. But the thing is, the thing is, the, the people that are, uh, let's say, that are uh, commuting to the city or looking at accommodation from uh, from townships around New South Wales, around Australia, to uh, to you know, because they can, they, they're, they're Australian citizens, they can move around uh, when, the, when the state borders are open and so forth. So for those students, the local students, what, what seem, all I can see happening is these, these new uh, apartment, uh, apartments that are going to be built or this new accommodation that's going to be built, obviously it's going to be heavily subsidised by the government and by, you know, by the taxpayer ultimately, by you and me and, and others uh, and our viewers. And it's going to be really heavily subsidised. And but this is the interesting thing. So you're taking you're, you're taking away from the individual investors, and and you're going to to these um, institutions that are going to be heavily subsidised. And obviously, so where are you going to go if you can choose if you can pay uh, fifty percent uh, of the rent? Or the the accommodation comes out of your pocket, and the other fifty percent from you know from the government or subsidised by the government. Of course, you're going to move there. Of course, and it's new, it's new and shiny. So the the ones that are going to fill it are going to be the individual investors, and once again, predominantly the overseas investors that the government is just going to it just doesn't really care about them because you know they don't have a voice here. They've already paid the stamp duty, so you know go to hell. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, we know that a number of overseas investors are looking to divest rather than acquire. And we know that the interest levels, particularly in apartments, is very, very low. You know, there's a more, bit more interest, as we've discussed previously, from various places, including from China and from Europe and from the Americas, mostly houses and mostly further out. So, you know, the, the nature of the market has changed dramatically. And uh, I think, you know, the bottom line is this, that um, the local authorities quite like the idea of large developers developing because they get all those fees right um, development fees and all sorts of things so in a way you wonder to what extent this is about um, uh, you know porking up the um, uh, the the finances of the local authorities here uh, never mind the fact we've got <clears throat> plenty of spare capacity already yeah look and uh, all, all sorts of things uh, conjure up with when we start talking about these uh, uh, these organisations and, and and the sites that they buy and, and and what they're actually building and 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 what they're even allowed to build, 
but I, again, I, can't, I, I keep on saying, Martin, that it's it's the unfortunate thing is that there are only a few companies in Australia that can build a high rise, and in most of the times they won't build where where, where others where, where others seem to want to build uh, for because of the um, easy access by you know, government backhanders or uh, or brown paper bags, whatever you want to call it, whatever you want to you, you want to put it to, you know, all these e easy e easy ways that they come in. Uh, the all the um, uh, backdoor supports that they get that lo locals don't seem to to be getting, and yet uh, on the other side of that coin is the fact that you know, rents are becoming uh, very very restrictive in terms of you know good accommodation is becoming very very restrictive for 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 the for, for the local you know, Australians. It's becoming harder and harder to to lease properties, uh, good properties, uh, because. Yeah, there's just not a lot around, and people have a lot of people have made that move. Uh, I mean, there were stories floating around how of of the um, the number of the, the large number of uh, removal uh, trucks and vans that were that, that were you know, carrying people out or you know, from uh, from the eastern suburbs uh, to 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 the northwest, and basically they were moving back home. I guess the young people were moving back home because they didn't want to get caught up in these hot zones uh, of these. Um, uh, yeah, you know, of these lockdowns again, and and yeah, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of um, uh, disinterest with with local people with regards to living in in apartment dwellings and so forth. But yet, we seem to be getting more stories, and we get seem to be the AFR seem to be pumping out more articles and, and pumping out more uh, about um, you know overseas uh, companies. And also, you know, the, the big organisations building bu building big. I mean, they must think that bigger is better. I don't know. <laughs> well, you've got to keep that um, construction beast fed, just as you have to keep the uh, finance beast fed. Uh, and, of course, um, uh, interestingly, APRA came out today warning the banks they need pre to prepare for negative interest rates. So um, they've got a few months to um, report back as to how they're going to do it. And uh, what that basically signals is, despite all the um, talk about economic recoveries and booms and interest rates going up, a lot of the major banks have been talking about that. The truth is, the central banks are likely to take rates lower because they need to give yet another stimulus to uh, the economy. And I use the um, uh, the analogy of uh, force feeding, right? So you know, savers will basically have to pay for the privilege of keeping their money in the bank and uh, ever lower rates to um, uh, people who want to borrow more money uh, from the banks because all of that is about pushing more money into the economy to try and actually uh, get it to work. It's like um, a patty, patty for gras, right? You know, the force feeding of, of geese, right? <laughs> that's, that's the analogy I've got, right? <laughs> because essentially uh, they've lost the plot here. And so, you know, ever lower rates, negative interest rates, it's all now not just theoretical, but, um, you know, the regulators saying you have to prepare for it. So uh, this is, I'm afraid, not a good, not, not a good sign of anything sensible happening ahead. No, and this is where, where uh, I mean, as much as I, you know, I uh, talk about uh, the price of carrots and and everything, you know, the 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 cost of living is just gonna gonna go through the roof. That, you know, that dollar in in essence is just gonna buy is just gonna buy less, uh, and, and it it is buying less. And and you know, there's that uh, also the, the as you and I have talked about the. Um, uh, the, the, the packaging has become smaller and, and yet we're paying the, the same and yeah, things are just not not going uh, as far as what they used to. So effectively, uh, those that have uh, are, those that have things, uh, you know, those things are becoming, becoming more and more valuable. And those that don't have, it's going to cost them a hell of a lot more to in order to 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 buy. It's certainly not a not not the best way to move forward. Uh, and you know the government's been giving out subsidies after subsidies and money after money, handing over, handing money hand over fist for for people to get in the in the market. There's there's you know, restrictions with uh, with regards to construction and, and materials and labour and everything. I mean, it's just it just seems to be an all in, and hopefully something's going to work. Uh, you know, otherwise, you know, what, what's going to happen? I mean. I hope that something works for 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 all of our sakes, regardless of what yeah, you know, regardless of, of what type of property you live in. But if you can't afford to maintain it, and if you can't afford to to buy the essential goods and the essential you know and, and you know and, and 
provide for your family the essential services, I mean, what good is a, is a big mansion in the North Shore or in the Upper North Shore or wherever you may have that big mansion? No, a very good point. And uh, like I say, you know, you have to feed the construction monster, you have to feed the, uh, the debt monster. So those two things are rampaging around the place. Uh, unfortunately, doing quite a lot of damage. And interestingly, in China, um, the economy there is looking a little bit wobbly too. And in fact, uh, over the weekend, they uh, announced that they were reducing the what's called the reserve rate which the banks have to hold and they've reduced it down which essentially means that the banks can lend more more freely um, as an attempt to try and actually um, fire the Chinese economy so it's not just a local issue here in terms of uh, trying to um, you know get the banks to lend more and uh, you know feed that debt monster again China's going the same way yeah the only the only difference between us and China I guess is that uh, yeah we put a, a yeah, we put our money in in property, and that's the push, as you say, to keep the construction beast uh, uh, you know, fed and, and, and fat. Uh, but in China is, is is the opposite. I think in China, they what our WeChat chatters are telling us is that that they yeah that they're using that money to uh, whatever money they can get. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit more as to why I say can. Uh, yeah, they they they're going to be putting it into into the share market. Um, now, when I say what. They, what little money they can get, um, you know, even in good times when when it was e easier to to borrow, it was a lot. Um, uh, you, you know, you, you you could borrow money. Uh, yeah, the I'm back. Yes, you disappeared down another black hole. Was it the wombat or was it the <laughs> the cat? Yeah, I think it was the wombat because Dusty and Evan they're, they're, they're asleep. They've had a they've had a long day today, um, so uh, they're asleep. And uh, and uh, it was a wombat this time around. Uh, must have uh, bit into the, uh, the 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 other the antenna outside. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you're back. So you, as I was saying, yeah. it's it's not easy to borrow money in China, mm. uh, and that's why the, um, the the shadow banking system and the and private lenders flourished in the good times. Let alone now. So whatever little money they they can get, uh, they they you know, the the chatter is that they're going to be basically going to be gambling with it and putting it in the uh, in the share market. Yeah, it's interesting, of course, the share market has come back quite a long way from where it was, right? So, so you know, they're thinking it may well be rising again again now. And, of course, they're also, um, you know, throttling back the uh, cryptocurrencies in China, which, again, reduces another uh, area where people could invest. So if they don't invest in property, they don't invest in cryptos, share market is where you go, isn't it? Well, that's right. It's very, uh, very controlled. And, uh, obviously, the, it, it's harder to invest... Uh, outside uh, they don't want them to invest outside if anything they want all the uh, all, all the locals to basically to to sell all the assets that they have overseas and bring it all back uh, bring it all back to back home as they say to to, to keep that economy going I mean there's there, there are a lot of there are a lot of things there's uh, you know there's uh, you know, the, the the Middle East we don't want to get too political obviously on uh, on this uh, podcast. But you know, uh, China is certainly moving in leaps and bounds, and and, and pushing ahead uh, with what they're doing, and, and pushing you know in the Middle East with uh, with Afghanistan and the Taliban and, and everything else there. Let alone, um, I, I don't know whether you're aware, Martin, but also uh, last week or so, or the you know, week week and a half ago, you know, China just cut a deal with Malaysia with regards to natural gas. So you know, maybe maybe Australia is on the out with natural gas as well so it's we're, we're not looking we're not uh looking you know, or sitting pretty as they say no and we know of course that china is also in negotiation with africa with regard to getting iron ore uh, as well as of course from um south america so yeah on all of our major fronts as it were um you know we're sl it's slowly being nibbled away from us and um you know the consequence of that could be very serious look they are very serious it's but it's interesting though however that uh, the uh, a lot of these deals have been cutting South America, in Africa, in in, in parts of Asia, uh, you know, with China and and how China basically subsidised a lot of it or, or gifted the, the the vaccines. But one of the things that our WeChat chatter is saying is that the the, the vaccines that are that, that that China gifted to uh, large you know, um, parts of the world uh, are just no you know uh, no. Not having any effect on the Delta strain, uh, and whatever they're throwing at this Lambda strain, uh, this this newer strain from uh, South America, in the labs over in in China, it, it's it, 
they've got nothing in China that that that's that you know you know in the lab test lab test that they're doing that you know comes anywhere near uh, stabilizing that uh, that trend. So only God knows what else is going to is going to be uh, evolving around the world, and you know what else the governments are going to do. We just got to learn to uh, you know. Uh, get get on with things. Get on with the with, with our economy. And uh, you know, look, I, I'm not uh, I'm not pro. I'm not. I don't push anybody to get vaccinated. I don't push anybody not to get vaccinated. Each to their own is my thing. But one thing I do encourage people is to is to stay healthy and uh, you know uh, live a healthier a live a healthier life than what we used to. And uh, and look more into health and diet. Than, than into the science that uh, or these vaccines that are being so politicised that we don't know, you know, who's Arthur and who's Martha. Absolutely. Well, my recommendation is eat more carrots. Well, yeah, I've got I've got doubts about that, Martin. You know, I've got doubts about that. You know, it's just uh, for me, carrots are just a, a, a part of. But hey, look, it's going to be the next uh, bit of currency. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, each to their own. <laughs> Very good. Now, property tips. There's a really important one, right? Because there are a lot of uh, auctions now disappearing, right? Because they can't really have a whole lot of people around, particularly in New South Wales, um, to attend an auction. So there's some moving online, but a lot aren't, are there? There's actually something else going on. Now, uh, the, the the number of agents that we've been speaking uh, to, our teams uh, been speaking to, uh, a lot of them have, you know, off the record, have been encouraging us to, more so than ever, uh, to to make offers uh, before auction because they they're not they don't like uh, auctions and it's obviously online auctions. When I said they don't like online auctions, uh, online auctions obviously takes away a lot of the uh, a lot of the emotion. So in in you know. I like the online auctions because it does take away a lot of the emotion. They can't create and they can't uh, pump the crowd up to to pay more and to get emotionally tied up. So the the dynamics of play uh, are in favour of the of the buyer. Uh, look, there are reports that some you know some uh, auctions have achieved uh, uh, great results. You know, good luck to them. Uh, but obviously that they've been well managed. Uh, unlike other properties that agents are also finding it hard to to get people through, especially if there's a lot of people that uh, that are looking in those particular areas. So it's hard and, and people are a bit concerned because they're not able to do the proper due diligence uh, and, you know, and, and the, the time restraints of going in, going out and being able to, to do um, a good inspection or perform a good inspection of the property to, to get emotionally tied up. So. A lot of agents have basically been saying to us, you know, uh, make us an offer, basically, and and they'll be happy to. They're more than willing to take it to the agent. So my tip is, uh, you know, inspect, do your due diligence, and you know, prepare your offers well in advance, uh, because especially, uh, you know, agents are fearing that if we go into another six week, eight week lockdown. Uh, it's just going to get harder and harder for them, not only to show, and they're also fearful of the fact that uh, we might even go into uh, harder lockdowns and, and you know, e inspections may not even be uh, allowed. No, that's absolutely right. And it's interesting because, you know, people are now talking about lockdown for another four or six weeks or something, and we're starting then to collide with the so-called spring season, aren't we? And now, if that actually does collide, that could be quite um, fundamentally important for the market, couldn't it? Well, that that, that is going to be interesting, and this is why we've uh, we keep a very close eye on the uh, you know our, our market is generally more focused on on homes than it is on uh, on apartments. You know, one in one in twenty clients, uh, I would say, have been uh, have requested for us to look for them for apartments. We uh, as an own occupier, as a or for an investment, uh, but we've. Um, the majority are uh, apartments. Yeah, you know, last week, uh, because of this, uh, agents being fearful of of these future lockdowns or longer or lengthier lockdowns. Yeah, you know, we were able to secure two out of three deals, and we're pushing for another one uh, early this week. Uh, again, the owners were very adamant about going to auction, but now, now that the um, now that things have changed, the, uh, the 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 agents pushing them to. To go into negotiations with with interested parties, which is which is a good thing. So yeah, if look, uh, what we've got is is 
we've got a delay in work that's happened because of uh, you know, you know, lack of trades. Uh, fundamentally, there's you know, there's been a short supply. A lot of the uh, a lot of the um, uh, the offsiders for a lot of trades companies have been caught overseas because, as you know, there were a, a lot of labourers were um, were pretty much students that or you know individuals that came over originally as students. Uh, so they're they're not around. So things have been taken longer. Uh, yeah, historically, uh, and also because of the the, the nature of the the climate, uh, winter is winters are slower months uh, of the year for for listing numbers to for properties to be presented. Uh, particularly this winter is is being colder and seems to be colder and and also wetter than than last year. And so yeah, that's that's constrained things. But it's going to be interesting what we end up in spring, uh, with the, with the spring numbers, and, and if you know, and see how whether or not numbers for freestanding homes are going to surge or they're going to remain the same because people are going to be skeptical uh, of these lockdowns. Absolutely. Well, we'll keep an eye on it, of course, as normal, and um, people can rely on. Um, this uh, this show for getting early intelligence about what's going on. I mean, we've been ahead of the curve on uh, lumber shortages and uh, you know all the other stuff that's been happening. So watch this space, and um, we'll do it all the same again next week. And um, you know, find some more things to talk about. There's always plenty to talk about around the property traps, isn't there? Oh look, there is, there is, and uh, it's all. And as I say, Martin, if if our followers, uh, our viewers, want to follow me on uh, on on Twitter, uh, as you know, we you and I post things on a regular basis on on the Twitter feed as well. Uh, and um, you know, a, a large, uh, more than ever, I've I've received uh, you know, direct messages for help and support around uh, around rentals. Uh, happy to be of of uh, of assistance as much as I can. Obviously, I can't get can't get to all, but I try to get to as many as I can, and and then my uh, my uh, inbox gets filled up fairly quickly. So I try to get a you know to to as many uh, as I can, and um, you know so yeah so just follow us on Twitter, and uh, you know hopefully we can continue to relay and uh, keep you ahead of the curve. Absolutely. And of course, Dustin and Evan will be right at the front, won't they? They'll be watching everything that's going on. Oh, look, they're, they're, they're avid followers. Just today, they just had a bit of a, just got a bit, bit of the sniffle. So just got to be careful that uh, they don't, uh, they haven't caught anything, Martin. So that's why they're not jumping around. <laughs> Excellent. Well, I hope they, uh, they bounce back very soon. And as always, thanks for your time tonight. And uh, I'll look forward to doing it all again next week. Yeah, and I'll start uh, sharing next week the my progress with uh, my preparation for the carrot beds, Martin. Uh, I look forward to it, yes. Well, this is a very scientific experiment we're going to get involved in, so we'll uh, <laughs> be able to see the layout of the carrots and uh, we'll be able to measure them each week and report on their growth and, uh, yeah, all of those good things. I look forward to it. <laughs> all right, Martin. All, all the best and uh, stay safe and stay healthy. Yeah, you too. See ya. Bye-bye.